Thanks for listening to Car Talk. You know, NPR has a great new way for you to get the news each morning, a podcast called Up First. Give them 10 minutes and you'll find out the big stories and big ideas of the day. It's the stuff you really need to know and why it matters. Start your day with Up First, weekday mornings by 6 a.m. Eastern Time on the NPR One app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the Center for Interspecies Communications here at Cat Spot <laughs> Plaza. I like it. Interspecies. Oh. Yeah, here's an interesting article that appeared a couple of weeks ago in Newsweek, I think. It's a blurb about a book called Spoken Cat, where author and wacko, apparently, <laughs> Alexandra Sellers claims to have interpreted cat language. She's nuts. And, well, in her book, she tells you how to speak cat. For instance, ma means cut that out, and <laughs> means bring me some cream. And, and I happen to know from my own experience that ma means, <laughs> oh, no, not down the laundry chute again. <laughs> Can't yeah. I take the stairs? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is obviously silliness, but but it, but it got stupidity. me thinking that if interspecies communication is possible between humans and felines, yeah, why not between humans and automobile mechanics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I like it. With my vast expertise and having spent years in in the mechanics' natural habitat, yeah, of it, I mean, grime, it would be good for humanity. If there were communication between those two species. Well, so you know how to interpret some of the sounds that you hear in the, in the shop. Yeah. So I, I thought I would teach the general public a few expressions that, oh. that can be used and or understood when talking to one's mechanic. For instance, you listen carefully to the inflections so you don't... I'm going to try to guess. Okay. Yeah. Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> Wait, do that again? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the little upward inflection at the end. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No idea. That means, hi, how are you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. I was looking for some deeper meaning, but I guess that was stupid. We're, start, we're starting off slow <laughs> Start because off slow. <laughs> this, is, this is tough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's different? <laughs> yeah, the first one was, mm -hmm. Oh, that was, this is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that means, uh, I think I know what's wrong with this car. No, you're going too deep. It means, fine, thanks. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. Mm hmm. What is the meaning of life, mm. and why are we here on this planet? Mm, means clutch job. <laughs> <laughs> boat payment. <laughs> well, how do you say boat payment? Well, we're getting to that. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Brrr. Oh, you are in a lot of trouble. That's right. It, which which equates to? Boat payment. Many boat payments. <laughs> <laughs> Many boat payments. <laughs> yeah, this is good. I like it. Yeah. Brrr, brrr, brrr. <laughs> <laughs> A whole boat. <laughs> a whole boat. There you go. <laughs> a liner. <laughs> Here's one more. <laughs> <laughs> the transmission fell on my foot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not the laundry chute again. <laughs> and none of these expressions should be con confused with. <laughs> let, me, let me feel it again now. <laughs> I know, I know That's I the sound you make after we do takeout from Sam's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to call us about your car or communication with your mechanic, our number is 1-888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, my name is Eric. Hi, Eric. What's and, up? Uh, I'm in uh, Stamford, Connecticut. Yes, I know and, it well. Yeah. <laughs> and the weather's wonderful. Of, of course. The daffodils are blooming. Yes. And my car is harmonic. Daffodils. Now get this. Now just you said daffodils, and all of a sudden it kicked in. I wandered lonely as a cloud. <laughs> that roams on high over vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden the daffodils. daffodils. <laughs> Beside the brook, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. For oft one on my what couch. What a sucker, will you mean? In vacant or in pensive mood. Herman, help me. They flash help. upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. I am well, truly impressed. Eric, thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> Did you I, see I, the Manchurian you know, candidate? You know, when, when my brother went to grade school, 
I guess they, they did really improve education between the time he went and the time I went. They didn't have grade they, school when I was going. Well, when you went, I guess they used to tie you kids up and make you learn that stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it was, yeah. What do they do, electric shock therapy? <laughs> electric shock. So, Eric, what's on your mind, man? Well, I, I've got a um, Saab uh, 9000 9, Turbo. Mm. It's got uh, 86,000 miles on it. And uh, when I'm, you know, cruising down the Merritt Parkway and there's a large truck coming by that's going to squeeze me out uh, and I go to accelerate and I'm, you know, cruising at 70, 75 miles an hour. Yeah, just under the speed limit. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Always want to observe the law. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I get off of the uh, gas pedal. There's a, there's a, a, it's not a humming sound. It's the sound, uh, it's a spinning sound, like a spooling sound. And it goes, Mm. only when I get, come off the accelerator. And just for an instant. Well, should we, should we, should we initiate this, the discussion about what your next car is going to be now? Or should we wait until, (laughs) but here's what you do. When the engine's ice cold, Mm -hmm. pop the hood, Mm -hmm. bend over. And kiss the turbo goodbye. Really? Because <laughs> it's going into La La Land. Is that what the sound is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so but... sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're taking it so well. <laughs> now, any idea what one of those costs to replace? Oh, yeah. More than you got. <laughs> <laughs> really? If you're driving an 87 Saab, that's pretty obvious. Well, there that's are obviously how I <laughs> various ways to go. You could get a used one. You can get a new one. You can get a rebuilt one. But I, I would expect that you're going to spend, uh, at the very least, seven or $800 if you went the cheapest route, which yeah. is a used one, but probably double that or more to get a reconditioned one. But I mean, the truth is that this is pretty low mileage for this car. Mm-hmm. This is a very, very nice car. Uh, do you love this car? I do. Yeah, this it's is a very for. nice car. I it's agree. paid for. I love it. Yeah, it's paid for, and a couple of thousand bucks, even if it came to that, mm-hmm. big deal. Mm-hmm. you got to just do it. You bite the bullet, and you just go ahead right. and do the it. The real heartbreak will be when, after you've done this, the transmission, the transmission goes. goes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but what the heck? You can't <laughs> predict everything. There's nothing. Now, is there anything that I could have done to avoid this or... Is that just part of... Well, you could have changed the oil probably more frequently. Uh, you also could have uh, cooled the turbo off, especially, it, it, you, you may have read in the book, it's advisable when, when you shut the engine down, if you've been driving it hard. Right, I do right, right now he's saying, book? What book? <laughs> <laughs> War and Peace? What are you talking about? No, I, I actually do that, the cool down. I well, you do. do. Yeah. You do. Well, all good that did, huh? Hey, well, there you go. So much for the book. I read it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really the only thing you have to do. When, yeah. when you, if you've been driving at high speeds, when you come to a stop and you're ready to shut it off, you really ought to sit there for like a half a minute, which is an awfully long time when you've got nothing else to do. Or right. have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> or you have to go to the bathroom. Then a half a minute is, is an eternity. Minutes pass like hours. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been doing that, then you've done everything that you could have done. It was out of your hands. It was just the cheap junk that they did over there in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you may be able to go for months and months like this. In fact, you, you're going to drive it until it conks out, the turbo, that is. Right. So let us know when, how long it goes. Yeah. Well, right. okay, now here's the question. How, what happens when the turbo gives out? Does the engine stop, or do, do you just le- lose horsepower? Well, I mean, m- many things can happen, uh, the, the worst of which is that the turbo can suck the engine oil out. That would that would be bad. It's that like, would be bad. Uh, you've would... heard of Dracula? <laughs> it's a similar kind of phenomenon. Yeah. So I mean when it when it happens, you've got to fix it like that day. You don't you don't get weeks to think about it. But will I be able to get home when it happens? Yes, the tow truck will be able to get you home <laughs> after he drops your car off at the dealership. Remind me to pay my triple A bill. You pay yeah, your triple A. Get two of them, in fact. I, I just don't want you to go away thinking that you've been a nice guy about this and and, and you've been somehow subjected to some horrible fate. Because the truth of the matter is that you did this by driving 75 miles an hour all the time. Is that what and does it? flooring it because you've been, you've been using that turbo. Yeah, that's for true. For these 86,000 miles, the turbo's probably been engaged for 85, five of them. <laughs> but what fun I've had. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I'm happy for you. Have you did you have $2,000 worth of fun? Well, yes. 
that. More than that, right? <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> Great. Thanks for calling, Eric. Okay, Good luck. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right now, I, I mean, I he guess... just hung up the phone. He said, don't tell the fuck. I'm selling this dog. one 888 talk or one 888 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hello, this is uh, Sue. Sue in Buffalo. Hi, Sue. Sue in, you know... Sue without an E, please. What? <laughs> S-U? S-U. S-U. Okay. She, now that's interesting. Isn't it? Are, yeah. you, are you Chinese? <laughs> no, no, I'm English. And Although oh. I've been here in uh, the States now for four years. So I'm, your I'm, learning, too, I'm learning the language. Was your family too poor to have an E on your name? Or did, were you there before the, the vowel drop? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I send it to Bosnia. That's what happened. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> That's now, my contribution. Now you sound like a a, a reasonably intelligent woman. <laughs> Only reasonable. English accents will do that. English you know. accents, oh, as we know, English yes. accents do make everyone sound intelligent, at least over here. But <laughs> why would a person reasonably intelligent leave jolly old England and go to of all places? Buffalo. The because Buffalo is such a wonderful place to come to. Oh, oh fair bull. City, Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo. <laughs> oh, now you're not to be rude about Buffalo. Really? Why in the world would anybody want to go to Buffalo? Well, now, have you been? Of course. Well, you obviously didn't come and visit the right people when you were here. Well, we clearly well, the people got to do with it. <laughs> well, that's why Buffalo is so much fun. Oh, okay. You'll have to and bring your car talk on a road show. Right. Okay. Their motto is visit the people. Buffalo has nothing else going for it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone I'm, sent us a letter with it which said there's a bumper sticker in Hartford that says, Hartford, you could do worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling. We've Sue. given you a hard enough time. What's Are on you your really mind, nice Sue? To me now? Well, I have, <laughs> we'll I've got nice. a sort of a two-part question for you, if oh, I may. Okay, part one. Uh, part one. Well, it, it's a little scenario. I, um, the house I live in, I have a, a we driveway alongside the house, and I was coming home the other evening, and uh, my neighbor had a painter um, painting the side of the house, and he said, "Well, the painter, um, if you don't want us to get um, paint on your car, why don't you?" Um, re- but park on the other side of the house in our driveway, which, which I duly did, reversed into their driveway, and just by mistake, reversed my car into the edge of the trim of their house. <laughs> um, and uh, I thought I'd just taken the paint off the bumper. Um, oh. But unfortunately, um, I made a little bit more of a damage to my, to my bumper. So the first thing I thought was I wouldn't have moved my car next door yeah. unless they had asked me to. So I wondered if I had some case um, on their insurance. No, what's well, part B? But before we go on, this is this is an interesting point you bring up, and I realize I know, why I know people your association with a law firm there, and I wondered what well, their. No, I, 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 I so... sense that why people are so litigious these days. Yeah. Being English, of course, I'm not used to this. Well, I'll, I'll, well, I'll tell you why. I think people are so litigious. Life has gotten so complex and things so expensive that you can't take responsibility for anything you do anymore because it's cost too much money. Well, which would bring me to my second point, because I was having dinner that evening. I had some friends from England over, Howard and Val, lovely English couple. It was her vis- first visit to the States, and we'd been laughing about your program. And so up it came in conversation whether my other dinner guest was a lawyer, Connie. Uh-huh. And uh, she said, no, you haven't got a case to stand on. She said, but she said, try a hairdryer. She said, because nowadays, uh, she'd heard this with the, with the bumper not being too badly damaged. If I heat the bumper, mm-hmm. it'll, I can mold it back into shape. Have you heard that? Well, uh, it's a plastic bumper, I presume. Yes. And you, and you scrunched it? Well, it's only a you tiny just... wee bit marked, and it just is just slightly out from the rear of the car. But oh, it makes, oh, it you, makes you, a noise as I'm driving along as if the, 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 I nearly said the boot. I mean the trunk. The trunk is just a little bit open. Of course, it isn't. So it's just that little bit loose. Oh, 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 I now see. Now you're in the picture. So you've pushed the whole bumper away from the car. But only a tiny bit. You can hardly see. That's why I'm surprised it's making it, the noise that it does on it, the ever so slight. Well, you may have done more, more to it than meets the eye. Yeah, I, might, I might think so, I. too. Yeah, well, no, I, I don't think I'd recommend the hair dryer. I, I think I'd recommend that you take it to a body shop, which won't cost you anything to have them look at it. Right. And to find out, in fact, what they think can be done to fix it cheaply. Yeah, if it's making noise, a hair dryer is not going to fix it. The hair You can be nothing. sure no. of that. That piece that you've damaged is not really the bumper. The bumper is beneath that. Not beneath it, but behind it. Is it? What have I damaged? Because that piece is called the fascia. That, the is, the fascia. Bump, that is the bumper cover. Right. The bump, I'm writing this down. The bumper cover. It's a little piece of cosmetic stuff because underneath Plastic. it, I mean, you wouldn't want 
a little plastic bumper that could be dented by a t- tapping it against the side of by a house. By backing into somebody's 400-ton house. <laughs> No, all one that could be fixed with a hairdryer. Obviously, there's something more substantial underneath it. That something more substantial is called iron. Oh, there is iron underneath that. See, see. All right. She's from Southern Oh, so it looks like I'm going to have to go and talk to an expert. I think so. Yeah, Yeah, especially if it's failed in that regard. (laughs) Especially if it's making noise. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I will do just that then. When are you going to come to Buffalo? Never. In the summer. That's July what? Seventh and eighth? <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Thanks a million for your call. Well, thank you. It's a, a delight to talk to you. Bye bye. Bye bye. I wish I could speak like that. It's I wish de- you could speak English. I mean, did you ever say it's a de- it's been a delight to talk to you? Well, not not today I haven't no said that. No. Hey, Rocco, it's been a delight talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you look stunning tonight, Rocco. Step into the light. <laughs> Hey, look, do you remember anything about last week's Puzzler? No. Well, okay, I'll guide you right to it. You ready? Right, yeah. All right, imagine you're a troglodyte, a real knuckle scraper. Uh, that's me. Go no, ahead. Don't go ahead. I know. All right, go ahead. Okay, now, since you're a troglodyte, you speak in grunts and one-syllable words, okay? Yeah. Me understand. <laughs> there you go. Now, you're on an airplane. The pilot passes out. He's out cold. You go up to the cockpit, and since you have a pilot's license, you tell the flight attendant that you're going to land the plane. So you say what? What, what, to the attendant? Yeah. I say, hey, baby, what's happening? (laughs) No time for that. Come here often. (laughs) (sighs) There's no time for that stuff. You have to tell her that you're going to bring the plane in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Me land. Close, except you're a rare grammatically correct troglodyte, so you say what? Uh, I land. Right. I land. I land. I land. The puzzle takes place on an <laughs> island. Boy, that was that was grueling, wasn't it? It's about a family that's stuck on an island, and we'll be back with the whole story in just a minute. Well, she runs rough, five high, stalls out, no drive, won't start down, shift, clutch, slips, pedal sticks, steers hard, pulls right excessively, runs away, dog tracks fluctuate, she won't accelerate, won't charge, won't engage, squeaks, squeals, pulsates, backfires, headlight, dim locks, froze, I can't get in. Floods, leaks, overheats, dented fender, hood won't close, chirps, scrapes, vibrates, grills broke, cold smoke, she's broken down again, she's broken down again, she's bound to do me in. I believe she's gonna win To fix her is a sin Cause she's broken down again And even though the Brothers Grimm say, isn't that scaring little children whenever they hear (laughs) us say it, this is NPR. Support for the Car Talk podcast comes from Harry's, the razor company started by two best friends who believe a great shave shouldn't cost a fortune. Harry's makes high-quality razor blades and sells them online for half the price of the leading brand. And Harry's is so confident in the quality of their blades, they'll send you a five-blade razor and shave gel for free. Just pay for shipping when you sign up. To redeem your free trial offer, go to harrys.com slash car talk. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and the answer to last week's puzzler. And this was from my Rising Floodwaters series. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first in the series, right? Oh, have the you best had of, others? Well, I don't know. I may have. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, this is number one in the series. <laughs> a, a family of four and their dog get trapped on an island when, when rising floodwaters tear out the bridge they'd used just a few hours before. Frantically, they search for some means of crossing back to the mainland. And finally, when they just about given up hope, the son says, I found a small boat and oars. Mm. They gather around, but but their joy is short-lived because the, the manufacturer's instructions, which are printed on the, the back of the boat, <laughs> tell them the boat can carry only 180 pounds. Thank God Grandma's not here, <laughs> says the son. It's, it's just Mom, Dad, the two kids, and the dog. And the dog is the only one of them who can swim. <laughs> so the boat can carry only 180 pounds. Well, the father weighs 170. i got to write this down. The mother says she weighs 130. And the picture here says, I say 155. <laughs> the son is 90 pounds and the daughter is 80. And the dog weighs 15 pounds. Everyone can row except the dog who, who can swim. Got and it. the question is, is there any way in which the family can be saved? And if so, what are the fewest number of crossings to save everyone? Are you with me? 
Oh, is there any way at all that they can be saved? What do you think? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm betting yes. <laughs> wait, wait. Can the dog swim with someone strapped to his back? <laughs> well, the fact that the dog can swim is a, is a red herring. Good. Because the dog doesn't have to swim at all. Here's, here's how it's done. The boy and the girl row over to the, the mainland. That's 170 pounds. That's 170 pounds, okay? One of them comes back. Doesn't matter which one. Doesn't matter which okay. one. Okay. The next trip, the mother and the dog row to safety. Got it. So now we got one of the kids over there, the mother and the dog. But now the other kid comes back. The other kid comes back. So the back. only two that have reached safety so far are the mother and the dog. Right. The boy and the girl row over again. Oh. Okay. Yeah. One of them comes back. The father rows over. Got it. The other kid comes back to the island. And now the two kids come back together. Row to safety together. And then when they get get there, they look for the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so so who's our winner? Wow. That's good. So how many trips was that? It's nine crossings. The winner is Jack Mueller from Dixon, California, and for having his answer selected at random from the boatload of correct answers that we've got. <laughs> Sinking boatload. <laughs> Sinking boatload. Jack is gonna get a twenty six dollar gift certificate. To the Shameless Commerce... Do you notice that? I don't... The $26 gift certificate to the Shameless Commerce Division. Notice that we raised the gift certificate. And notice that we raised the price of everything by, by a buck. By two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, anyway, look. We're going to have a brand new puzzle coming up in the third half of the show. So don't go anywhere. In the meantime, if you have a question about your car, give us a call. The number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Mary Jane. Hi, Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. After whom the shoes were named. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. So where are you from? I am originally from Manchester, New Hampshire, but now I'm living and working in Orlando, Florida. No kidding. You're mm-hmm. working for uh, Disney World? Yes, I am. Do you know what Mickey Mouse's name was supposed to have been before it was Mickey? Uh, Mortimer. You're very good. You passed the test. You're hired. <laughs> She's already hired. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> What's up, Mary Jane? Okay, I have a problem with my car. Yeah. When I'm driving and I come to a stop, it stalls. Stick shift or automatic? It's a stick. It's, yeah. Let me tell you, it's a 1984 Honda CRX okay. with 196,000 miles on it. Mm-hmm. But every time I bring it to a mechanic here in Florida, they shake their head. Hmm. And I've been driving it this way, trying to figure out if there was a pattern. Because what I've found, the only pattern I can come up with is when I drive a distance going about 60 miles an hour and I downshift to a light, then it'll, it stalls. it'll stay running. Stay but running? It, yes. Ah. But if I'm in traffic going from light to light, then it stalls every time and it's making me crazy. And I had, there was a mechanic in New Hampshire, when I had the car looked over, he said, are you having trouble starting your car? And I said, I'm not having any trouble with my car. He said, mm. don't touch the carburetor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Said, don't spray anything in it. Don't look at it. Don't do yeah. anything. And he was right. <laughs> well, you may have to touch it now. Yeah. I yeah. think you may have something as simple as a stuck secondary throttle in the carburetor. I like it. Yeah. And okay. And you can take it to one of these guys that you've gone to before and suggest this to them? Well, it happened before, and they found a little hole in one of the millions of... Vacuum tubes. hoses. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this car that does do have a million potential vacuum leak locations. Uh-huh. So, And the way you have to find this, just start pinching off vacuum hoses with a needle-nose pliers until you find the one that fixes the problem. Okay. It's either a stuck secondary throttle... Or it's a vacuum leak, and I'm sticking with the stuck. I'm sticking with the stuck second. Yeah, I think so. And and, and you can tell your boss that this is no Mickey Mouse answer that you got from him. <laughs> Mickey Mouse answer. <laughs> well, good luck, Mary Jane. Thank you. And, and uh, you're going to have to start looking for another car soon. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Do, I'll take that back. Do the people at Disney World insist that you take certain medications every day? <laughs> and is there electroshock therapy going on that no one else knows about? There is not that, to my knowledge. That you, that you know, of course, you couldn't Correct. know about it. You wouldn't even know about it. You couldn't know. Post-hypnotic suggestion. They exactly, do it in the sleep. But I work with some people, and, you know, I think about that every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, well, think and about it. were you always a very sweet person, or did they make you into that when you got there? 
there there are people to this day that can't believe I work here because they can't believe that someone as unsweet as me ah, could get a job. There. Really? Well, you sound wonderful to me. So sweet to me, man. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, except when I said the thing about getting rid of the car, then she turned nasty. <laughs> well, I, you don't under, I've just been through a lot with this car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know, I know, but don't get attached to it. It's only a hunk of rust. <laughs> It's my hunk of rust. See you, Mary Jane. <laughs> Bye. Good luck. one <laughs> 888 talk That's one 227 8255 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, guys. I'm Cole Martin. I'm calling you from Iowa City, Iowa, and doing my best to avoid work. Hi, Cole, is <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Iowa City. Yep. Are we talking about a few hundred thousand people in this city? Oh, the Iowa whole city? state is a few Come hundred on. thousand. <laughs> no, I, I think if you were to take away the University of Iowa, you'd be down to, uh, oh, a few tens of thousands uh, really and, and then we've got uh then we've got the university and that gives us most of our people gives us most of the social life too yeah yeah wow interesting so you you uh, uh work at the university actually i work at the university hospital i'm a fresh uh fresh green intern in the department of medicine really huh, cool yeah. anything we can help you with <laughs> You can help me figure out my car. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've got a um, Mazda 626 Turbo. Sure. Uh, what I've noticed is in the last uh, few months, I've been getting more and more exhaust noise out of the uh, the middle of the bottom of the car. And uh, so I took it to my local muffler shop, and they put it up on the forks and uh, uh, had a look. And they told me that I had a hole in my resonator. I didn't know I had a resonator. It's, yeah, uh, the resonator yeah. is right behind It's right the, next to the uvula. Right yeah. behind the, <laughs> <laughs> the catalytic converter on this thing, and well, the uh, they they tell me it's separate from the catalytic converter, and they tell me that they can uh, put in a new resonator for about a hundred bucks, or they can just saw it out and put in a pipe for fifteen. And I'm wondering, is this an important part? And uh, well, what what should I do about it? It is not a an emissions part. Yeah, how how can we make it relevant for Doc? I mean, it's. It's like, like your out, it's like cutting out about 10 feet of your intestines. Oh, that's nothing. How many feet of intestines do you have? 35. More or less. More or less. Yeah. It's like cutting out five feet. Five feet. So, so what does it do? Well, it'll make, it, it'll the, make the, it sound different. The more muffling you have between the engine and the tailpipe, the quieter the engine is. Usually cars have resonators because there isn't enough room <laughs> to put the, mu- the big enough muffler that they wanted to put. And so, so they have to break the muffler up into pieces, basically. So this isn't going to change the harmonics of my exhaust and cause the fumes to come out my dashboard. Or no, no, it won't, Your it won't exhaust do that. doesn't have any harmonics. <laughs> 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 no, as a matter of fact, the, the less restrictive the exhaust is, the more power you'll get. But you don't, you're not concerned with power because you've got too much power anyway. Yeah. And this is hardly going to change much. Yeah, I would definitely go for the $15 approach. Great. Was this a big muffler chain that volunteered to do yeah, this? Yeah, this is the, the, the local, the local small-town uh, muffler shop. Oh, this, oh. Is like, this is like Fred's muffler. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this is, this is very nice of Fred's. See, this is the kind of small-town service you get yeah. in Iowa. The guy is would not you, Would try- you ever get anyone in New Jersey? In New Jersey, they would tell you that it was illegal to take that out and that the replacement was going to cost $350, and if you didn't do it that day, they, they were you. going to send your name <laughs> into the EPA and have you arrested. If you were in New Jersey. Well, that's what I think the dealer's going to tell me if I bring it there. Oh, yeah. And he or at a dealership anywhere. That's, true. <laughs> that's right. And he, my brother doesn't mean that in a bad way. Uh, no, I don't mean that in a bad way. What do I mean it? <laughs> <laughs> but I think you can safely cut out this piece, because it's only a little tiny resonator anyway. Mm-hmm. It doesn't do very much. And they can weld in a straight pipe. It will not violate any laws. Mm-hmm. And it won't violate my engine. It won't violate it your won't engine. won't violate your engine. Mm-hmm. Just keep driving, Cole. Have a wonderful time. So how long are you going to be an intern there in Iowa City? Oh, about another six months, and then I'll uh, go up to uh, the ladder and become a resident for another three years. Have you gotten any Fs? Well, I'm very <laughs> proud of the, uh, of the C I made in anatomy and the D I made in, um, uh, in statistics. I, ah. I found it very liberating. Great. Good for you. You know, I was going to say that one of, the, one of the only areas where you don't want to encourage C's and D's <laughs> is medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Will you study more, you <laughs> bum? Are you, have you specialized in anything? Uh, eventually, I'm going into neurology. Great. Maybe you can help my brother. <laughs>
<laughs> there may be hope. See you, Cole. <laughs> Thank you. All Dr. Right. Cole. Bye-bye. Dr. Bye-bye. Dr. Cole. <laughs> Thanks. one eight 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 car talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, my name's Marnie. I'm calling from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Marnie. Ann Arbor. What's up? Okay. Here's my question. My father passed away a couple months ago, and we cremated him. Now, he didn't leave instructions as to what he wanted done with his remains. So we buried part of them. My mother has part of them, as do myself, my sister, and my father's sister. And my father owned... A 1962 Corvette. Can I just ask one question of, of the producer? Sure. Does anyone screen the calls? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is this? Hey. I'm no, sorry. No, no, I'm ahead. sorry, no, Marnie. No, don't. No, I mean, I, go, I'm Let sorry. Let me finish my question. <laughs> we'll go get, ahead. He had a 62 Corvette. Yes. Yeah. And you want to know if you can... Well, never mind. You want to cremate the Corvette. if placing a small amount of his ashes... In the gasoline tank. Jeez, you know, I was going to ask that question, but I said, never mind. I said, who would be crazy enough to want to do that? In the gasoline tank. Yes, to sort of Woo. combust my father into his car. Oh, I see. That's a very, very interesting idea. Yeah. Talk about being one with your vehicle. <laughs> exactly. No one will ever have an experience like that. Huh? <laughs> So the question is, will the car run if you do this? Well, I mean, I know it'll run, but I don't know if it'll harm the engine at all. Well, it won't harm the engine, but it'll probably plug up the carburetor. Uh. And, it, and in fact, it probably won't get combusted, or at least not very much of it. Well, although, although, even, although even, it's all, it's all obviously it's just symbolic. Right. I mean, you could sure. pretend to throw the, put it in the, no, just spill no, it on the ground. No, you can't no. lie to a dead person, for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, here's is a better there idea. Way I could sort of burn him up in the car. What's this thing about burning? Well, you want to make him one with the car, yeah. unmount all the tires, and sprinkle a little bit of his remains in each tire and put them back on the wheels. That's an idea. Oh, that's an idea. I got a, I got a, another idea for the combustion. If, okay. One of the things you could do, instead of putting it in the gas tank, the thing runs, I presume, mm-hmm. right? Start it up, take off the air cleaner, and okay. sprinkle down the throat of the car. Oh, that'll be really good. Some engine. of the remains. Yeah. That way, it avoids the carburetor. You're, mm-hmm. pa- you're sort of bypassing the carburetor. <laughs> it goes right into the cylinder. It goes right into the cylinder, <laughs> where it's much less likely to do damage to the carburetor, but more likely to do damage to the cylinders. I, I-, I think this is a bad idea. Okay. So, put it- <laughs> the tires is the idea. And since it's already burned, it's not going to burn again. I mean, yeah. we're down to nothing. No, you've already d- they've yeah. done it, yeah. Yeah. The tires is a good idea. Go for the tires. I would, how about <laughs> this is this this is sick, but how about the ashtray? <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> that would be a, an appropriate place to be. Yeah, it would. Just don't empty it out and have it laminated. Oh, laminated. You have it, oh, have it sealed up. That's a good idea. Sealed with what? Plastic. Sealed with they plastic. They can pot it. It can be his ashes can be potted with epoxy. Sure, and then the, the, you'll never be able to use the ashtray again, but why would you want to? Yeah. And he would be permanently in the ashtray. I want to say that this is right up there with our cream rinse call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, this is certainly an unusual. <laughs> you may have to win the prize for unusual this week. But I like I like the ashtray. You can have. You can take that thing to, uh, uh, who, who would do that? Who would do that potting? I, I'd look in the yellow pages uh, under P- plastic. <laughs> And see if there's someone who, that does uh, plastic lamination type stuff. Okay. And they and you just bring in the ashtray with the remains in it, and they can just pour the plastic over it and seal it all right I in. I mean, alternatively, you can buy the stuff yourself. You can go to your home center and buy what's called bar top finish, mm-hmm. which, which is a two part, which is an epoxy finish that's used to get that what looks like a one foot thick finish on on bar tops. Okay. And you mix this stuff together, and it's very thick, and you would put the ashes in the ashtray and then pour this stuff on the top, yeah. and it would dry, and it would be in there forever. Right. Yeah. Well, Marnie, thanks very, very much for your most interesting Well, question. I'm sure you've opened up something new for all of our listeners to think about. You know, I, you I hadn't really have. thought about I mean, this I, before. I mean, I'm already, as you were talking, I could see my Dodge Dart with me looking up out of the ashtray. <laughs> thanks, Marnie. Thanks for calling. See you. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, now... Before we get to the new puzzle, we have to take a short break. Uh, time for a haircut. <laughs> no. 
just a trim, actually. <laughs> but when we come back, we will have the new, very brief. I, I like to balance things out. Last week's puzzle was long. This one will be brief, so stay tuned. There are roads to cross and hills to climb. Have the total performance of Ford each time. So do it, see it, go there in a Ford. Drive along a stream or country lane on a winter's day or in a summer rain. So do it, see it, go there in a Ford. And even though dogs bury their master's radios in their backyards whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Square, existing to help small businesses succeed. Because when businesses succeed, Square succeeds. So they let customers accept every major credit card anywhere for one flat rate and no hidden fees. They deposit your money in one to two business days or even instantly. And Square offers up to $250 a month in free chargeback protection. Sign up now for free processing on your first $500 in sales at square.com slash car talk. Some terms apply. NPR is working with the Knight Foundation to better understand why listeners like you spend time with car talk and other podcasts. Please help us by completing a short, anonymous survey at npr.podcastingsurvey, all one word, dot com. It takes less than 10 minutes, and you'll do us a huge favor, and it's anonymous, so nobody will know that you've been listening to Car Talk. That's npr.podcastingsurvey.com. Thanks. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the new puzzler. Yes, I can hardly wait. Now, as advertised. It'll be brief. This will be brief, because last week's was so lengthy. That was long, but it was good. You liked it, huh? I did. Well, I'll see how you like this one, buddy. (laughs) Do you like apples? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay, go ahead. My neighbor Frank says to me one day, Yeah. he says, I have five children. And I say, "Uh, I know that. And he says, and half of them are boys. Yeah. And I said, I'll huh? get right back to you. <laughs> Can you explain that? Oh, that's it, huh? Now, if you think you know the answer. That's brief. It is brief. Yeah. Yeah. If you think you know the answer or just have nothing else to do and you feel like taking a stab at it, mail your answer to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our Fair City. Ma, 02238. Or, of course, you can email us your answer from Always. our website. And if we choose your correct answer at random from among all the correct answers you, that we receive, that yeah. is not all the correct answers in the universe, just the ones That's we happen right. I mean, to I mean, you may write a correct receive. answer on the back of an envelope. Hey, you may, send di- it you may discuss it with someone over coffee. But if we don't actually if have access to it. If we don't get it, then you hey, get what? You get squat. <laughs> there you go. And that's it. But if you don't get squat and you win, you'll get one of our <laughs> new Car Talk t-shirts. Now, if you'd like to call us, the number is one eight 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 car talk That's 888 227 Eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. My name's Mike, and I'm calling from Pittsburgh. Hi, Mike. Hi, what? Mike. And I've got an interesting problem. Yes. Okay, I've got a 1987 Ford Taurus. Uh, it's got a 2.5 liter four cylinder. It's fuel injected. With wow, five. that's that's a rare car. Yeah, and it's got a five speed in it. That's even rarer. That's very rare. It's got 135 thousand miles on it. Uh huh. Now here's my problem. I drive it around town. The car is fine. I take the car out on the highway where I'm running 65, 70 mile an hour, and red fluid starts dripping on my feet. Now, oh. I've crawled underneath the dashboard, and it's not a clutch master because it has a cable-operated clutch. Oh, too bad. And it's not <laughs> the master cylinder leaking because that's dry. That's And it's not red. Right. And, and, and the power booster is between it and you. Right. So yeah. it, would, it would be leaking into the booster. Right. So okay. it's not those things. You're not going to like what it is, my boy. Are you considered changing your wardrobe to red pants only? <laughs> no, I don't think red socks are go too good with black shoes. Geez, you know, my brother came many, many moons ago Yeah. when I lived in Texas. Yeah. My brother, who was uh, between jobs. No, no, time. I was on a business trip. <laughs> oh, is that what you told them? <laughs> <laughs> I was on a business trip, yeah. Came, came to visit me. Yeah, and he he lands in the at the airport in uh, San Antonio and rents a car mm-hmm. and shows up at my house 
and his right pant leg is red like someone had stabbed him. Okay. Really? I don't remember this. You don't remember this? No. And he says, what the heck is going on with this thing? And whatever was going on with that car is going on with your car. As I remember, it was an 87 Taurus, wasn't it? <laughs> or maybe it was a 47 Taurus. Maybe a 47 is <laughs> more like it. Yeah. And as soon as we figure out what was going on with that car, Mike, we'll call you. Okay. <laughs> now, what was happening to that car was that uh, automatic transmission fluid was working its way past the seal in the cable and actually traveling up the uh, 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 speedometer cable and oh. finding its way to the head of the speedometer. I remember that Where now. it was dripping down onto your leg. Interesting. Your, your, auto, your manual transmission has, interestingly enough, automatic transmission fluid in it. Okay. Okay. Now, why they did that, you'll have to ask them. But it does not. most manual transmissions have gear oil or motor oil in them, but yours right. has automatic transmission fluid. And that transmission fluid is traveling up the speedo cable where it shouldn't be. And when it gets to the, the head where the speedometer is, it's dripping out and dripping onto your leg. So you need to take it to a tranny shop and have them replace that seal. Okay, well, I think I can do that myself, I think. You might be you able to. You probably can. It's See it, Mike. very simple. All right, thank you very Good much. Good luck, Mikey, baby. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 1-888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Hannah from Northampton, Massachusetts. Hannah. Hannah. Northampton. Yes. Northampton. Is that, is that where uh, Mount Holyoke is? No. No, that's where Smith is. That's Smith. where Smith is. That's yeah. right. Smith. <laughs> okay. Got it. Yeah. Just down the road from Mount Holyoke. Yeah. Okay. We got it. We, we zeroed in on you, they're, Anna. They're, they're having troubles out there at Mount Holyoke ever since Leah left. I know. What are, what I know. are they, they doing They don't know what there? to do without her. They're having sit-ins. They think it's 1963. I know. I think they're protesting Leah leaving, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, it to could get be. It back. could be. We want Leah. <laughs> we want Leah. <laughs> so what's up, Hannah? Well, first of all, I have to tell you that um, I just I want to present the other side of the coin of, of life at a women's college because... Oh, you're a Smith College student? I am. Uh, you you I, sounded young enough to be a college student. Yeah, <laughs> but you didn't want to ask. Oh, I was about to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm a senior, and I've been here for four years, and I've loved it. You've loved it. So I've you loved think it. Leah was just some kind of a wacko? Crybaby. A crybaby. No, Mr. I Mama. Understand. No, I, I don't. I, I mean, I definitely understand that a woman's college and maybe the East Coast isn't for everyone, but I yeah. definitely. Um, well, where are you from? I'm actually from Canada. From Canada? Canada, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that joke. <laughs> it is, eh? It is, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we're about what part of Canada? You are obviously from the English speaking part of Canada. I'm from just south of Toronto, actually, Hamilton, Ontario. Oh, I know it well. Yeah, everyone oh, knows you do. Hamilton, sure. Sure. Home of the Toronto Maple Police. <laughs> <laughs> no, home of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, actually. The Hamilton the Tiger Cats. Renowned CFL team, football. Team. CFL, Canadian, Canadian Fo Football League. We won the Grey Cup about ten years ago. The Grey Cup? Yes. That's all they can afford is a Grey Cup. <laughs> I mean, Most other like a, a silver, a, a gold, green, a green cup, even. <laughs> the Grey Cup, might as well. Yeah. How about the tin well, cup? <laughs> the brown We're Canadian. cup. Canadian. We like to be very neutral, so we go with grey. All right. Now back to your, back to the subject here. You're a okay. senior. You're going to graduate in a couple of days, probably. That's right. Uh, what did you major in? Like art history? Um, French and history, a double major. <laughs> Whoa, French and history. <laughs> exactly. So why was your experience at Smith College so wonderful? I mean, what's with the women's college idea? Well, I think it's all about, it's all about self-esteem and self-confidence, or at least that's what it's all about for me. Yeah. Um, I wasn't comfortable um, speaking in class. I wasn't comfortable doing any of those things. I, you know, and yeah. and being at Smith, I really, I really learned to to respect myself and to respect what I have to say. But the theory is that it was the lack of presence of males that allowed this to happen. I it, think it is suggesting because, um, suggesting. It's, that males um, are, in some way, the cause. A distraction, you say. No, the <laughs> cause, whatever the, whatever the mechanism may be. But it is the presence of boys, men, in class that make that all happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe that. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Well, I mean, if you think about, 
if you think about our, my high school experience, the people who talked a lot in class, the people who put their hands up first, tended to be the guys. And the males have longer arms, and you could see their hands more readily. Exactly, and they have louder voices, and they have lower voices, yeah, males so we are stand out more. Physically and dominant. And it's as simple as that, huh? It also has something to do, I think, with... Um, with the competition thing. I mean, I'm just not here. I'm not in competition with people. And, you know, let, in high school, it was, it was very definitely a competition for boys' attentions. And probably in much the same way that boys are competing for girls' attention. Oh, yeah. so, oh really? Yeah, so, I, I don't know. I'm oh, not a boy. Oh, yeah. So, but, um, and also, you know, there's a feeling that you have to act a certain way if you want to be popular and if you want to be liked by boys. Right. And if you don't have to think about that, that distraction is, again, another another aid to Yeah, and you're, you're, you, you have time to, to figure out who you are instead of who you think you should be. Yeah. Well, I like it. I like it, too. I like, especially uh, the idea that you should take all the testosterone-poisoned 18 and to 21 year old boys and put them away somewhere. Just get them where alone. You know where they should go? They should all go in the army for four years after high school. Don't get me started on that. The boys should. That's exactly where they belong. They should be in the army where Sergeant Torres and Sergeant McNeely (laughs) are running their little butts off. So they're so tired. (laughs) Whenever I think of boys from 18 to 21, I wouldn't wish that on them. But I I think I'm grateful that I wasn't around them. Well, I appreciate the fact that you called and explained all this to us because we are, of course, what? Boors and yahoos. And we don't (laughs) understand or appreciate the value. And I actually have a question, too. Oh, really? Oh. (laughs) Go about, ahead. Is it about graduate schools or <laughs> No, it's 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 actually sort of a car question. Oh. It's you might call it a car protocol question. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, good. We're good okay. at that. Whatever okay. it means. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, I'm I'm graduating and yeah. um I'm actually gonna move in with my boyfriend who has a car. And Where'd you uh, find the boyfriend? Did you sneak out at night again? <laughs> Somebody forgot to turn on the electric fence? (laughs) Do they have an electric fence at Smith College? They they do not. Anymore. There are are no rules about boys in your room. Oh, really? Really. Oh, cool. So you somehow managed, even though you were hidden away there in this little... <laughs> it was, it was, I met him during the summer. Con George, that's all right. We don't care. You don't have to make up any, <laughs> you don't have to make up any story for us. <laughs> okay. It's so true. you were hiding in the convent, but you managed to meet this guy, and, yeah. and now you'll be moving in with him. Yes. Okay. And he has a car, and I do not. Yeah. And so this is going to be, you know, kind of a difficult time. We're moving in together, and, you know, I think there's going to be some stresses. And I just wondered what your opinion on, what are the rules about me using his car? Rules? Yeah. I mean, is there, the is there any kind of... Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I'm sharing his apartment, so do I share his car? No, I don't think so. I, I think it's all part of the package. <laughs> oh, you think it's a package deal? It's a package deal. It's like the American oh, it's like double occupancy. I mean, that's what does, I uh, doesn't whatever applies to the refrigerator apply? Well, no, wait, wait, wait. No. The stereo? You'd use the stereo? Well, that's You'd different. use the refrigerator? Well, uh, the one, the one, you can answer one question, which will allow us to give you the right answer. Mm-hmm. What's the make of the car? It, um, it's a Ford Explorer. You won't be driving you can't, this. You, you can't touch it. <laughs> Here's what you do. When he's sleeping, <laughs> steal the key and have your own key made. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I never really thought about that this would be an issue. And then about a month ago, um, I can't remember what we were talking about, but there was it was some sentence that ended in the car. And that's what I said. Yeah. And he immediately jumped right on it and said, the car, it's my car. <laughs> well, I guess that answers your it question. Is, it is certainly his car. And I don't think living together, at least at, the, at this point in your relationship, necessarily mm-hmm. gives you any kind of rights to his car. What's his name? Kyle. Kyle? Kyle. Mm, Kyle it doesn't, Kyle's don't let you use their cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. His name well, was like thing, Norm. He lets me use it when it, when he's, when it suits him. I mean, when, I, when he wants me to go and pick it up somewhere. Oh, oh so I you have driven it. Oh, sure. When you're subservient. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, you won't be driving his car. You know, well, so? Not much anyway, unless it needs service. <laughs> 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 but I think under the circumstances, you have to wait for him to offer. And, and okay. if you, at some point, he'll say to you, Hannah, you know, whenever you need the car, feel free to take it. Yeah. Uh, but I shouldn't ask. I should just sort of wait for that to evolve. I think so. 
Okay. I think so. And you, it'll tell you a lot about him, too. Well, about his generosity. Wait, wait, but, but, but didn't any of the courses that you've taken over the past four years address this question? Medieval history? I mean, they really did. I mean, French? What, what the heck have you been doing for the last four years? <laughs> this is what it's all about. What she's been I've doing? been working in the rare book room. That's what I've been working doing. in the rare book room. Thinking about boys. <laughs> 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 no, trying, I, mean, I think trying to escape, <laughs> trying to figure trying out to get, how to get over the, the electric, electric fence. fence. <laughs> I think, I think you will learn a lot about Kyle by the way he handles yeah, the car. Absolutely, mm-hmm. you will learn a lot about his generosity and his feelings toward you. Yeah. I mean, if you really feel strongly about you, the mm-hmm. car will become so insignificant. Yeah. Well, and I just, you know, I figure he'll learn a lot about me by the way I approach this whole car thing. So I don't want to do it wrong. Yeah, don't want to tread on his toes. Or... Well, yeah, on the, on the right, you don't, you don't want to seem too pushy. But I, we, I, yeah. I thought you spent four years not being subservient. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't understand this. You have sort of this no. self-deprecating, excuse me, you have a sort of self-deprecating attitude about this whole thing. He the said, car he is, to you, come you into separate. my life, Hannah. Yes. I want you to come into my life, come into my apartment. I want you to use my refrigerator. I want you to use my stereo. I want you to use everything. But the car, well, the is, car is separate. The car is separate. Yeah. Underwear, that's separate. And too. underwear is separate. <laughs> and don't wear my underwear right, I would, anymore. I would liken the car to underwear. <laughs> it's that person. I think so. Maybe. Okay. Wow. And at some point, there may be a day at the breakfast table where he says he gives you permission to use his car. And, and his the underwear. underwear. <laughs> <laughs> that will be a He'll... red letter day. <laughs> He'll hand me the key to both his cars. And, and the locked underwear drawer. <laughs> See you, Hannah. Hannah, thanks a minute. It's been a joy, a joy talking to you. Oh, and good thanks. luck in and your new thank careers. You. And whatever thanks they for the encouragement. Be. Thanks for the encouragement to all other young women embarking uh, oh, no problem. upon uh, Women's College. Yeah. Smith is a great school. I've loved it. Great. And your check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. From Michael Binky. <laughs> Bye, Hannah. Michael, thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> we were on with her for like an hour. <laughs> well, it's happened again. You've wasted another perfectly good hour you listening ain't to kidding. Car Talk. <laughs> Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy Berman. Our associate producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenolosa. <laughs> Our web lackey is Doug the Old Grey Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the Reno, Kino, Vino, and Cappuccino Concertino, <laughs> Bugsy Lawler. Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Margin Overa. Our customer care representative is Haywood Jabuzoff. Our personal makeup artist is Bud Tugley. Our motorcycling enthusiast is Barnaby 